let's talk about panic buying. I know that I am generally the voice of reason when it comes to things like this, but even I am not immune to uh, COVID-19 inspired anxiety shopping. Uh, for instance, a few days ago, I bought a dozen Cadbury cream eggs and now I have, well, I have one left. Oh man, these truly are the end times. Toilet paper is the big thing here in the United States. Uh, apparently Europeans and Asians find this hilarious because uh, I guess there were only a few countries left that haven't boarded the bidet train to Squirtsville, uh, while Americans and Australians are trading blows over those last few squares. Italians are like, wait, you still use paper to wipe your butthole like an animal? So yeah, I also panic bought a bidet. Uh, the only potential danger to someone in quarantine running out of toilet paper is them needing to take way more showers. Uh, it's honestly not that big of a deal, though I do have to admit that I'm regretting not hanging on to the five to ten flyers I got every day from the Michael Bloomberg campaign before he dropped out of the race. The hoarding that has become a bit of an issue, though, is that of N95 masks. I talked about N95 masks way back in 2018 uh, when California was on fire uh, and wildfires pretty much destroyed the air quality here in the Bay Area. Uh, back then, I encouraged people who were here to go buy N95 or N100 masks and learn how to fit them properly. Uh, N95 or better masks can block the particulates that come from wildfires that can get into your lungs to cause irritation and worse. I have a reusable mask. So back then I bought a bunch of extra single use masks and handed them out to friends and neighbors who needed them. N95 masks can also prevent bacteria and viruses from getting into your lungs, which is why people rushed out to buy them during the coronavirus panic. Uh, those people also bought extra, and it's not really clear whether they're doing the thing I did and gave them out to friends and family, or if they're just sitting on a giant pile of masks, staring at it and coveting it like smog, if smog was a germaphobe. As I mentioned in an earlier video about COVID-19, these masks aren't super effective at preventing the general population from catching this virus, but they are effective for healthcare professionals and people who are caring for the sick in their home. So not only are people panic buying something they don't need, but uh, by doing so, they're making it more difficult for the people who actually do need them to get them. I mention all of this because I want to assure you that you do not need to buy these masks for this purpose. Uh, owning one will probably not stop you from getting COVID-19. Uh, just stop touching your face start washing your hands, and stay the fuck at home. I also wanted to talk about it because I saw this tweet from an ER doctor uh, who writes, the fire department just called us, they can't find any masks, wanted to know if they could have some of ours, we don't have any to spare. Shout out to everyone who hoarded masks, so doctors, nurses, EMS, and firefighters now have to beg and borrow to protect themselves. That's not wrong, but it's also not really right. Uh, like people buying up all of these masks 100% fucks with the people who have an actual need for them. But the people most affected by that, uh, by that panic buying aren't firefighters or ER doctors. It's in-home carers and others who are in particular situations where they would benefit from a mask, but it's not necessarily their job to have a mask because Professionals who need these masks, which does include firefighters, doctors, nurses, even the scientists who study these diseases, generally are not buying their masks at the local pharmacy. They were going to run out regardless of what the general public are doing. Sure, they could have run to the corner store to buy a few extras, but their main stock comes from bulk distributors. Those distributors are the ones who are running into trouble. And it's not because those distributors are looking at equivalent orders from Home Depot and the Children's Hospital and just choosing to fulfill the Home Depot order because, hell, those kids are going to die anyway. So what is the problem? Well, it's multifold. First, 
half of the world's sanitary masks and 90% of all surgical masks in the United States are produced by China. And the bulk of those are produced in the province where COVID-19 started and where all of society had to come to a standstill in order to fight the spread of the virus. They're trying to make up for that now by converting other factories to produce more masks to get them shipped around the world where they're needed, but that does take time. Second, the United States fucked up when it came to preparedness. Uh, not just the United States is in panicked consumers, but is in our government. The United States has something called the Strategic National Stockpile, which is several secret big ass warehouses around the country that are filled with medicine and other supplies that we might need for a national emergency. At the start of the year, the stockpile had 12 million and 95 masks. The U.S. will likely need upwards of 3.5 billion masks over the next year. This is not a surprise. Researchers have known for years that a pandemic was likely and that we were underprepared. But Trump, back in 2018, disbanded the National Security Council in charge of shoring up our reserves. Back in 2018, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the National Institutes of Health warned Congress that when you have a respiratory virus that can be spread by droplets and aerosol, there's a degree of morbidity associated with that. You can have a catastrophe. The one that we always talk about is the 1918 pandemic, which killed between 50 and 100 million people. Influenza first or something like influenza is the one that keeps me up at night. Scientists knew that this was a question of when and not if, but the Trump administration dismissed their concerns and cut the National Security Council in half. That's why there aren't enough masks. That's why there aren't enough tests. That's why the United States is plunging headfirst into a national disaster that could have been handled six weeks ago. Trump also moved oversight of the strategic national stockpile from the CDC to the Assistant Secretary of Preparedness and Response at the Department of Health and Human Services. And they apparently have no fucking idea how to handle this emergency. Back when the first COVID-19 cases struck in Washington at the end of February, that state requested hundreds of thousands of masks and other personal protective equipment, PPEs, from the stockpile. They got less than half of what they asked for. They had to fight with the HHS for two more days before the government agreed to fulfill the initial request. Now they need even more and so does California, so does New York, so does everyone eventually. Soon the entire country is going to need these masks, masks and PPEs, and the stockpile will not have enough because it wasn't being run by people who warned us that this was going to happen. So yes, you should not be out there stockpiling masks. Uh, they probably won't help you anyway. If you do have extra, please consider donating them to local hospitals or nursing homes. But also, let's not be so quick to blame the mask shortage on the actions of scared individuals. Those individuals aren't being educated by their government on what they need to do to survive. They're not being reassured by their government's inaction regarding this pandemic. Uh, they don't trust our government to take care of them. And they sure as hell aren't the ones whose job it was to make sure that all of the doctors, all of the emergency personnel in this country was prepared for a pandemic. That was our government.